G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I have a couple of announcements to make and a little bit of a spiel to be had. So if you guys are interested in the Q&A itself, then by all means go ahead and skip to the little link that should be down in the description below. So now that we have that out of the way, uh, I first want to get away the uh, couple of donations that have been made through PayPal. I sincerely appreciate it, but you guys are way too generous. Uh, we have Tristan with a $48 donation and Dominic with a $66 donation. I sincerely appreciate that, guys. I don't know why you do it, but regardless, I appreciate it a lot. So for those of you that were wondering about my merch or had any uh, sort of inkling about my merch, I now have some more listings up of uh, a different design. I personally like this one a lot better. I have kept the Ladies and Jets mug still around so if you want that mug specifically you're more than welcome to get it but i won't be listing the t-shirts and all that sort of stuff anymore it might come back a little bit later um or i might see if i can you know list it only for patrons or members or something like that um but i don't want to list too much stuff on the store um and so i'll be sort of minimizing what i do that being said i am going to add a couple more designs that are similar to the sunset designs that we have, just with a couple of different aircraft, maybe a helicopter. I'll see what I can do, I'll see what time I get to make those designs. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, oh, one more thing, we have Nigel Squadron number three opening up. So, for those of you that were looking at grinding squadron vehicles, um, we have a third squadron for you. I've just purged all the other Nigel Squadrons, so Nigel 1 and Nigel 2, and I've added Nigel 3. So, to join those, you need to go onto the Discord server and let them know what squadron that you are applying for in the Looking to Join Nigel Squadron section. You also need to apply in-game. You need to in-game have a requirement of, I think it's 100 RB battles and rank 3 in any vehicle. Either one of those need to be basically ready to go. Fairly easy to achieve and it just means that we're not going to get smurf accounts or bots or... Um, anything like that. It's just a sort of low-level filter to make sure that, you know, you're not a complete uh, fresh off the bat type thing. But regardless, if you can reach that and apply through the Discord, then you're more than welcome to join. Anyway, ladies and gents, I sincerely thank you for the support. Check out the merch in the description below. And of course, thank you to those two donations. I really, really appreciate that. You have no idea how much that means to me. And um, with that, on with the video. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a developer Q&A. Often these are done by the uh, War Thunder producer, Vlacheslav Bulanikov, and he is one of the guys that is sort of making the decisions when it comes to War Thunder on a sort of, uh, from what I can tell, uh, a sort of directional point of view. Uh, any like loot boxes or any monetary things, I believe, come from higher up, but as I understand it, the majority of the important gameplay decisions are left with BVVD. Now BVVD seems to be pretty proud of his project and uh, there are plenty of good reasons for that of course. Um, and today he's sharing some of his wisdom and giving us a little bit of a sneak peek of what might be uh, coming in the future. So the first question is, do you have any plans for the USN naval variants of the Phantom in the naval aircraft branch? F4B, F4J and F4S so far we only have seen the addition of the USAF variants. And the answer is, yes, we have such plans. So ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it from the horse's mouth, and if it wasn't obvious enough, the F4B, F4J and F4S look like they're going to be coming to the game anyway. As I understand it, the F4J and the F4S are pretty much the next step from the F4E, so if we are going to be seeing any extra phantoms come to the game, which in more than likely we will see them before we get things like the F-14 and F-15. Likely coming to the tree is going to be the F-4J and I think the F-4N if I'm not mistaken. Um, unless I've confused that with a British Phantom, but I, yeah, this isn't my forte. So these types of uh, sort of Cold War combat and uh, aircraft, all that sort of stuff, not really my forte. I just sort of ride along with it, see what it is from a gameplay perspective. That's that's how I work. So I do I do know though that uh, I believe it's the F4J and the F4S come with pulse Doppler radars, giving them look down shoot down capabilities. Now correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section, but that is the next technological step for War Thunder. These guys 
are pretty obviously going to be coming next. I, I would guarantee that they would be coming sometime this year. So, moving on to the next question, which in my opinion is quite interesting. With the expansion of rank 6 aviation, missiles are an ever-increasing key element to combat. Given some aircraft now have a progressive choice of 2 to 3 missile options, is it possible we could see some basic form of stock missiles such as AIM-9Bs and R-3Ss? And the answer is, we do consider some options for high rank missile combat jets. Now, this is excellent. I really think that this is a good step in the right direction. A lot of these next coming up jets are going to be given things like R-60s, even R-60Ms in the future, AIM-9Ls, AIM-9H, AIM-9J of course, uh, all of these missiles are going to be a lot stronger and of course the missile combat is going to become longer and longer range and getting into a gunfight is going to become less and less viable. This is just the way that aviation and aviation combat or air combat has worked over the last say 50 years. So logically having a basic form of this missile is going to be a decent option. Now, the trick is, these missiles are fairly harmless compared to, say, AIM-9Js, R-60s, AIM-9Bs and R-3Ss are pretty damn weak. So, are they going to be enough? Well, we'll just kind of have to find out. Personally, I think R-3Ss and AIM-9Bs should already be stock for the F4E and the uh, MiG-21 BIS and MiG-21 SMT and MiG-21 MF, but honestly, we could even do with stock AIM-9Es for, say, our next step up of Phantoms or R-13Ms stock and uh, R-3Ss for, say, a next level up. Maybe there's a MiG-21 BIS from 1990, because I understand they did a revision where they basically gave it these, like, insane missiles. So, maybe we could have that for that, but I would personally think of this as a step in the right direction, because the stock grind for jets is already tough enough, and when you're forced into gun combat where it doesn't benefit your plane and your plane's playstyle, then I think we run into a little bit of a problem, and this is going to do a little bit, at the very least, to alleviate some of that. To me, it's kind of like giving a bomber stock bombs. You don't give it no bomb load and make it go fighter hunting, you give it a stock bomb load. And so, Gaijin are finally giving this a consideration, and I hope to God that they at least budge a little bit in this way. So, next question here is, some nations in game, such as Germany, Japan, Great Britain, and the USA, could support almost an entire line of float plane aircraft, with many examples not yet featured in game. Since they are increasingly more relevant in naval battles for quickly capturing zones, will we see more float planes and flying boats in future updates? And the answer is, you hopefully will. Which is a nice and vague answer, using those, uh, what does tech call them? Weasel words, which I, I guess that's the right term for it, but we are probably going to see a whole line of float planes. Now, I kind of expected a whole line of armoured cars for the British tree, um, but other nations that have float planes, other unique types of vehicles like that, um, should get a full line. And you could get this all the way up to late tier 4, and I reckon even some jets, I reckon the Soviets would have done something stupid with a jet engine and a float plane um, that's not the Caspian Sea Monster, because that would be a really bad uh, aircraft. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, if you know any of these weird planes or anything else that could be done tier for tier, do let me know in the comment section below. The next question here is, will we see an expansion into rank 7 for aviation this year? Stay tuned to our official news. Now, that means that it is definitely coming, and like I predicted, we are probably going to get a progression into further Phantoms, maybe further MiG-21s, MiG-23, and um, maybe some further Sukhoi variants, for better Mirages, all that sort of stuff. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, Panavia Tornado, I'm a little bit excited for it, but also a little bit nervous, as you can probably tell. So, we are probably going to be getting these sorts of uh, jets for our further updates. Now, it only makes sense because that is the next logical progression, and of course, adding new things to the game is probably Gaijin's best way to stay to make War Thunder relevant, and I don't really blame them. I don't really mind either, to be honest. So, what can we actually ex expect? Well, in my opinion, I think we're going to be getting a Vigan. We're going to be getting that, uh, maybe uh, an early version or an attacker version that's not quite as strong. 
Um, I'm pretty sure we could be getting a Swing Wing Mirage. That would be nice. That would be interesting. Um, maybe a stronger Mirage. Um, I'm not sure if the Mirage 2000 is uh, a little bit too strong in this case, but maybe the Mirage F1 um, and the Mirage, I think it's the G8, which has the Swing wing Wings. So that would be pretty cool, in my opinion. Of course, like I said, Panavia Tornado, further Harriers, things like that would be really, really nice. As long as they come into the game nice and balanced, of course. So, next question is, do you plan to add voice warning systems, the bitching Betty in aviation? And the answer is yes, this might be an interesting addition to high rank combat audio. Now this brings me to think about something else in the game, which is the way that missiles are currently displayed in game. Before, when missiles were first introduced, there was an audio warning and a text warning. And I really liked this, to be honest. It was really, really good for gameplay. And unfortunately, they removed it. Now, this is better for sort of a historical aspect towards the game. If you're looking at creating more realism, then of course, it is a fairly good change in that respect. However, for gameplay, it, it had its drawbacks. And those drawbacks were, you know, fairly, fairly... One of these drawbacks was the sort of linking of it to the spotting system and you and all you and I both know War Thunder spotting system is highly reliable it's a little bit janky and of course sometimes you get killed by people just that you don't see that don't pop, pop up on a radar that don't pop up on the RWR and they just hit you with the missile and you turn around and there you see them they pop up on the radar uh, or on the uh, spotting system to me that's bad gameplay and I don't like that so whilst this is a really, really nice step, I would actually like to see some more changes towards the uh, missile detection system. I would like to see missiles appear on the little radar behind or in the little circle radar on the top right hand corner of the screen. Um, and I would like them to be spotted for the entire duration of their flight rather than just their burn time. For me, that gives a little bit more gameplay, but you also still need to be on your toes. It gives you a little bit more streamlining of in, uh, information but at the same time it also keeps it to a, a, a realistic level or a level of realism that is appropriate for War Thunder and appropriate for jet combat that doesn't in my opinion add or take away to the experience but it also gives people a little bit more of a stick to lean on in a situation where there are literally planes that carry eight missiles and can fire all eight of those missiles within a minute so there could be potentially, at one point, 30, 40 missiles in the air at any one time if you really had everyone firing everyone's missiles. So it can get really clustery, but the uh, little bit of extra information that you could come across could potentially be beneficial, and I think that that is nothing but a good idea. So, next question. Are you planning to add the IL-40 and its modifications? The answer is yes, there are such plans. Now, I actually don't know what the IL-40 is. Hang on, let me let me quickly have a look, shall we? IL-40, it's a big bomber and it looks very... Oh, it's a ground attack aircraft. It looks very ugly. Um, but you know what? I say, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, like always, War Thunder adds some wacky aircraft and I think that might actually be good for uh, some sort of ground attack uh, event plane. I think that would be kind of cool. But at the same time, selling it as a weird premium or just putting it in the tech tree would be interesting as it is. More importantly though, ground attackers need to be relevant. They need to be uh, good and they also need to be at a fairly well-balanced battle rating. Now, at this particular tier, there aren't that many good ground attackers. It's the IL-28 and I think maybe the IL-40, depending on its bomb load, might be a fairly good uh, a fairly good option. It only tops out at about, I think it's 900 kilometers per hour. Uh, according to Wikipedia, 993, so it would be like an 8.0. I think that could be a welcome addition to the regular tree, depending on what its bomb loadout is. So, whatever. It's a new plane, and as long as it's balanced, then I really don't care. The final question that we're going to have a look at today is... Is it possible to implement in bombers and other aircraft with unused crew the crew mechanics of the tank slash naval types with the replacement of each other? It is known that for medium and heavy bombers, the crew did not only get along with the first slash second pilot and gunners, a bombardier, navigator, radio operator, flight engineer, etc. could still be on board. If the pilot or gunner was incapacitated, 
These crewmen would replace them, keeping the aircraft's combat effectiveness. Sometimes it is a great pity when a four-engine jumbo, jumbo, okay, is derived of its pilot with a single well-aimed shot, and it is immediately counted as a frag, or the gunner is knocked out and the upper hemisphere immediately remains defenseless. The answer is, the game already partially uses this mechanic in planes with dual control. To shoot it down by knocking out the pilot, you need to hit both pilots. Only if one of them is knocked, the aircraft continues to fly. As for the turrets, consider that the gunner's knockout also reproduces the possible destruction or malfunction of the weapon or the tur turret equipment, so that further use of this gun point becomes impossible. To me, this sounds like a non-answer, or a way to skirt around the question and say, no, we're too lazy to add this type of thing. Honestly, if a weapon gets hit like that, it would probably not kill the pilot. So if you think about a turret system, the pilot is sitting around the guns. It's sitting around the turret me mechanism. So for example, uh, a ball turret in the uh, B-17 might be an exception in this case. Um, alternatively, a B-29 has radio or um, electrically controlled tur turrets where the pilot actually looks out from a window, or I'm not sure, I think it's a window, and controls them with a, a joystick and sits in the middle of the fuselage. So the only thing maybe that could be damaged there would be the, the controls. But this to me just sounds like a lazy way out, and I don't know, this leaves me with a bit of a sour taste. I would really like for bombers to be a little bit more durable in this respect, um, but of course, the one thing that would ultimately deprive a bomber of its uh, life like that would be f constantly failing engines. So if you do a strafing run on vehicles like that, you tend to knock out a little bit of engine or a couple of other things rather than just a gunner or just a pilot or something like that. So in my opinion, it would give them a little bit more of a chance. It would help them uh, stave off the vultures. But I think Gaijin's unwillingness to add this sort of thing just reminds me that Bombers are really a neglected part of War Thunder. It's very, very sad, and I kind of wish it would change. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, th I think we're going to wrap it up here. I don't really want to cover ground forces, naval forces, helicopters, etc., but I do want to uh, address one of the miscellaneous questions here, which is, with the new hangar, is it possible to consider an instant test drive that launches you immediately onto the map at the base? The location seems to be really interesting and nice for exploration. So, the answer is, we have plans to change the tank test drive, but this is unlikely to be a seamless implementation. It has its drawbacks. The current hangar, as a map for a test drive, has them too. So, it's a yes and no answer. It's not going to be seamless, which makes sense, but, um, you know, it could be interesting. As again, nothing really for aircraft. And, of course, being an aircraft man primarily, and for those of you that come to my channel, you mo must mostly come for aircraft. I think I'm going to leave it here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much also for all the support that you're giving me. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If I can continue to save up enough money, maybe I can move out one day. And um, yeah, I might do a room tour on Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I can uh, show you kind of the, the setup and the situation that I'm in. But um, until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.